My small showman's engine needs some repairs. This one is part 11, wiring the book boost regulator and setting the output voltage to power 40 LED lights. I was pleased to find that it fitted in my mahogany box perfectly. Getting ready for the LED refitting, I bought a new soldering iron. And I also bought some self-adhesive copper strip. I'll show you that at the end. Back now to LED testing. Quite a lot of the LEDs I have in my box of LEDs don't work. As you can see here, I've set the output voltage to 1.99. What I'd like to do is mention a little bit more about this book booster thing. It's far in excess of what I need for this job. What you can do is set the input voltage and the output voltage to suit the application. For instance, if my dynamo only gave out 12 volts and I wanted 15 volts from the output, it would do that. But there's no such thing as perpetual motion or above unity, so there's always a price to pay. I decided to use this unit because it was very good quality, by comparison with the one that I showed in the previous episode. I could have made a whole full-length video about testing LEDs using this, this is a mere fraction of the time that it took to do the job. I did evolve rather an exciting system though, having two boxes, one for the dud LEDs and the other one for the ones that worked. And the working LED box had compartments, so all the colours were put in the same area. I really think I do need to get out more. I have not yet dismantled one of the side rails, it has 40 LEDs in it, and once I've put everything back together, the entire engine will contain 40 LEDs and not 80 as previously. I've temporarily connected the feed to the plugs on the box. When I do this for real though, I'm going to solder the ends of the wires so that they fit more securely into the screw fastenings on the regulator. For this test I'm using my power supply set to 30 volts and the voltage input of the regulator is also set to 30 volts. There's a bit of a rule here, the brighter that I have the LEDs the less time they're going to last. What I'm doing here is reducing the voltage and then increasing the voltage to find out what the voltage is that the book boost voltage regulator kicks in at. As per the instructions the lights start to light up when the input voltage reaches approximately 3.3 volts. When I was looking on the internet to buy some more LEDs, I did notice that the sets of LEDs had the LEDs all rated at different voltages between 2 volts and 3 volts, which explains to me why some of these LEDs worked fine and others didn't and went out. I need to test this system using the generator on the traction engine. I've moved my DC variable power supply out of the way. In this clip I'm adjusting the output voltage of the book booster to see how bright it can get the LEDs with the generator running not quite on full speed but fast enough. In any case it doesn't matter how fast I turn the generator. When it's generating 30 volts I will still get the same stable voltage out at the other end. When I finish this job the traction engine's canopy will contain a total of 40 LEDs, not 80 as I've mentioned before. For this amount of LEDs, the voltage is set at 2.75 volts. I really can't believe my luck. This unit fits inside my wooden box just about perfectly. Flush with success, the job is well underway and it's time to remove the rest of the LEDs from the other rail that you've just seen being lit on the engine. On this rail the penny dropped, I used a pair of pliers and just unrolled all of the wire breaking it away from the LEDs and it took much less time than previously. And even removing the very last part it came away without any problems whatsoever. All I have to do now is withdraw what's left of the LEDs. One of them was a bit stuck but the rest just fell out. I was a bit worried when I got to the last one but that almost fell out of the holes. I could have used one of these to suck away all the solder and then just withdraw the LEDs. This is a spring-loaded device with a plunger and it sucks all the solder off the joint. But it's nowhere near as quick for removing LEDs as the pair of pliers method. 
Here's a soldering iron that I've just bought, and note it is made in England. It is an Antex soldering iron. I already have one, and I've had it for about 40 years, and it's never given me any trouble. Unlike some of the Far East ones that I've bought in between times, which now are in the bin where they deserve to be, they were terrible. This is a simple Antex soldering iron stand, and once you moisten the pad, you can wipe the bit on it to keep it clean. It's very simple and very effective. I've also bought a 25 watt Antex soldering iron. That hasn't arrived yet, and when it does, I will put it with my existing Antex 25 watt soldering iron and gaze at them both lovingly. This time, to mount the LEDs on the mahogany side rails, I'm going to try some of this. It is self adhesive copper strip. If I stick two runs of this, along the mahogany side rails, then I can solder each individual LED to each side of the copper strip. Alternatively, I could use two long pieces of copper wire as bus rails. The term bus means bus bar in this case, not a mode of transport. This is a terrible soldering iron that I bought from a local DIY store. It's really ferocious and no good for this job, which is why I bought the Precision Antex model. It may be okay for bigger jobs though, but it's certainly no good for this job. Here I'm doing a test fit of the copper strip, and it seems to stick down quite well. As the copper strip was in a coil on the roll, I had to keep stopping to unwind the roll so it didn't twist together. This was a first attempt, and I don't see any reason why this isn't going to work, providing that I use proper solder and my small Antex soldering iron. Now I have a kit of parts ready to do the job. And that is it for this episode. I can speak no more on the subject. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.